afternoon wherever you are watching us from and welcome to Child Rights Now, a program that discusses on children issues, especially on the rights of children in Kenya and across Africa. My name is Collins Orono and today we are discussing the children's bill. And today we want to break down, give you a background on what is contained on the children's bill and what you should expect. And we shall delve deeper into the issue of child participation and participation of parents in the children's bill. And joining me today is Mr. Elijah Bonio at my far end, uh, who uh, comes from the Joining Forces Alliance, and uh, Ms. Jennifer Kaberi. She is uh, the Director and CEO of Mtoto News International. Karibuli sana. Thank you. So uh, I know you, you've been very, very critical, uh, especially when it comes to the children's bill. And I know this has been a very, very, uh, you've really fought for this bill and you've been at the center of almost everything when mm -hmm. it comes to this bill. Um, I want to start with uh, Jennifer. Uh, what, 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 what do you feel? How is your feeling about um, this bill uh, since it was uh, submitted uh, it was presented to parliament for the first reading uh, for me it's a relief it's been a journey sorry it's a it's been a journey um of of um since 2004 okay so the review has started in 2004 the first amendments of the bill and then um so major major amendments in 2010 uh there was there were, after the the new constitution of the constitution 2010 there was recommendation that all laws in kenya should be aligned to to the to the constitution and the new provisions and you know article 53 is very big on children and um, the bill of rights also is very big on children so there was this push to be able to align the children's bill to be to 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 the new to the to the constitution to the new constitution then so there have been attempts um in 2003 and to the, i'm sorry 2013 and 2014 there was a draft that was taken to parliament to to the then commission of uh, constitution um what cic commission for the implementation, implementation of, of the constitution yes yes yes, yes CIC, yeah that one so uh it 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 uh, it was to help and they gave the recommendations were they the the amendments were too many they passed the threshold so uh the gov the the cic recommended that there was a need for a new law for children so and so since 2014 uh this is six six almost seven years uh we we've been pushing okay we've been pushing for a bill um there was a child participation in the development of the bill where children from all the all over the country uh the 10 regions uh, former provinces of kenya were consulted in the developing of the bill and um so but now we got stuck so the bill has been ready since 2018 2019 the bill has been ready it's been sitting somewhere so this year is when we have seen some form of movement and we are so happy for that all yeah right, all right. yeah thank you thank mm -hmm. you very much uh miss jennifer thank you let, let me hear from you uh mr elijah mm -hmm. you've heard from jennifer jennifer is so happy uh, about the bill. <laughs> i want to hear from you are you happy uh with the bill and what what's making you happy about the bill uh thanks thanks that's a very interesting one <laughs> yes we are happy uh, with where we are uh, currently uh, because it has been, it's been long, like like Jennifer says, eh? and uh, the reason why I would say we are happy is because what was supposed to happen uh, ten years ago has now happened. Uh, and what I'm saying it was supposed to happen ten years ago, you know, w when you had a new constitution, yes, we we gained to have uh, a, we have a very robust uh, bill of rights eh? uh, in our constitution that of course provide for specific rights for the child but, but remember at that time priority, priority uh, in the constitution we had priority bills uh, that were to be drafted to enable the implementation of the constitution and the, the children bill was not one of them so so yes you remember uh, there was some time frame by which specific legal frameworks were to be put in 
place to enable the implementation of the constitution. Right? The Chilean Bill was not one of them. Meaning, the Chilean Act of 2001 was not cited as one of the bills that needed to be relooked into. So it means it was left to other actors to figure out what needed to happen in the Chilean sector. Okay. So like Jennifer rightfully puts it, so when the first attempt to, to, to amend uh, the Chilean Act of 2001 to align to the Constitution was done, uh, as she rightfully puts it, the then, uh, the then it was known as the Nyachai-led Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution, looked at the amendments. And, and I think the, best, the, the practice was that any, any, any amendments that were more than 30% uh, needed just to get a new law. So when they looked at that, they, 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 they recommended that the, the amendments that were being proposed in the Children Act were so many, and therefore it was better to just do a new, a new bill. A new bill. And the journey began. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bonio. But, you know, like, that is from, from 2001 to now. Those are over close to 20 years since uh, maybe the process started. Uh, no, 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 the process does start 20 years. Okay. You know, we have, we have the Children Act yes. 201. Mm -hmm. So we have been having the Children Act for 20 years. Okay. But the process that we are talking about today started after we got a new constitution. It started with proposed amendments that in 2013 then a recommendation was made that a new law be developed. So look at 2013 yes. to now. In total is about uh, how many years? Eight. Yes, yeah. about but, but, eight but years. Even that, even with that, mm. eight years is too much for yes. for, 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 for a bill to, uh, for these recommendations to have been uh, mm. maybe implemented. What do you think has been uh, maybe the challenge or the impediment for before we go into the first reading uh, I think this week? <laughs> okay, you know, I, I think we need to, let me bring it from the basis of Lesos land. Eh? Yes. Ideally, it's the role of the executive uh, wing of government to propose uh, a bill if that bill is the interest of the executive that they propose it. Yes. So, what I can say is a lesson learned is that failure by the executive to make a decision in good time, guided by a terms of reference and guided by specific timelines on what needs to be done, well costed and funded, is what might have contributed to the delay. Okay. Because Assuming in, and Jennifer perhaps you may want to comment on this, assuming, let's give it 2015 for example. Assuming in 2015, the executive made a decision that we want to ensure that a new bill for children is drafted in a period of six months. And then they said, after drafting, we want to subject that bill within the executive arrangement to public participation for another period of six months. That's one year. Yes. Then in 2016, they say, we have now got the views. We have a draft bill. We have got the views from the public, children and parents. Now we have a new bill. Then they say, you want to take this bill to, to parliament. What would have stopped it? Nothing. So what should we be asking ourselves? What is it that the executive has been able to do this year? Mm -hmm. And how come they never did it Before. five years ago? Uh, I think for me it's just the commitment because yeah. we've seen the executive proposing several pieces of legislation through a bill it is taken to parliament uh, the leader of majority would process it and becomes a law yeah. but then what made the executive not to prioritize this we may not need to dwell so much on on what was not done but I think some of the things that we really must say did not work well and that needs to be recognized yeah. in as much as we're excited as a new is a new bill Maybe another bit that uh, I may need to mention is funding. 
I, I'm here to see any, and perhaps Jennifer, I don't know whether you could be having that reference. I'm here to see any evidence that the bill that we have in Parliament today was funded by the executive in terms of the process of developing it. Because every year, the executive, through the relevant ministry or department, should have been having a specific target known as developing the children bill. Mm -hmm. And then they should be saying, to develop the children bill, this is the amount of money we require. At the end of the year, they should have been reporting, we asked for this amount of money, we were given, and we have used the money to develop the children bill. We are in a situation where, if you ask the question, what was the investment that resulted into the bill, that answer is not really available. Mm -hmm. The state knows, the executive knows, the cost required to de develop any new bill, because that they do it almost every month. So the cost of putting together a technical team, facilitating that technical team to develop a bill, ensuring that the public have participated until the bill is formally uh, approved by the cabinet and taken to the National Assembly, that cost is known. However, the bill we are discussing today, it was likely non-state and donor, donor, donor supported, but perhaps Jennifer can, can, can so, comment so, on that. So, Some of the lessons learned is the state really needs to make a decision if it's a state, state-led or executive-led bill, invest on it. Mm. So what you mean is uh, the state has been non-committal in uh, relation to on the children's bill? Yes, uh, 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 yes and no. You know, in terms of when you read the statements, official statements of government. For example, when the government of Kenya was reporting uh, in 2016 uh, to the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Children, it was. It, I think one of the things that were mentioned there was was the children bill. And then the, the, the recommendations that were given to government then was that can the children bill be fast tracked and finalized? Yes. And the government accepts that recommendation and pronounces itself that we are going to do it. Fast forward, several international days, the day of the girl, the day of the African child, the day of the International Day of Children, all the speeches, and we have some of these speeches, there's a pronouncement, the government of Kenya is committed to ensure that the children bill will be finalized. Yes. And we've seen previous cabinet secretaries make those statements in the same manner that the previous principal secretaries were making those statements. So if you analyze, and the good thing with the uh, Total News, yeah. they have the video clips of all these cabinet secretaries and presidents pronouncing themselves to the children bill. So the commitment by statements, we've been seeing it. But the commitment in terms of resource allocation yeah. to do what is committed by statements is what we've been seeing. Okay. Yeah. Now, J Jenny, uh, Total News deals with our, our issues, communication and all that, and advocacy, around advocacy. So what has been your role in making sure that, you know, uh, the children's bill comes to uh, the state that it is right now? Uh, for us, it's one involving children, ensuring that children have a voice. So we started, when we started is uh, in 2017, we, we ensured we engaged children. So even if you go to our youth children, we have channel, we have, uh, we have uh, videos where we were asking children their views on the children's bill, what they wanted to what they want to be included in the children's bill. Um, but we have been very consistent in ensuring and, and asking uh, government, where is the bill? Where is it? Where we, we know it was developed, we know it is somewhere, but where is it? So we have, we have been trying as much as possible to do that. Because that has, as Bonio said, the biggest challenge is that commitment. Okay, Even for the bill right now, to be where it is, some of us have to make calls to members of parliament. Please push for us. This thing, can you push for us? It's somewhere in parliament. Can you just ensure whoever is sitting on it to stop sitting on it? You know, uh, we have to engage media, uh, the media, and ask them, please, can you help us push for this thing? So that, so there is no commitment in terms of, you know, commitment in terms of budget and time. Okay anybody is listening to this we need to ensure that we have the act before the next election okay we cannot be focusing on an election bill before the 54 percent yeah because the fact that they don't vote does not mean they don't exist all right
the fact that they don't vote does not mean that they don't exist. So before we go uh, to uh, for a short break, uh, I want to ask the same question to you, uh, Mr. Bonyo. Yes. What have you been doing to make sure that you know uh, this bill gets to where it is okay. right now? Yeah. Thanks. L let me also just send my gratitude and appreciation for a number of civil society actors. Eh? You know that those things that uh, are done, which are never recognized, but I think it's important to recognize mm -hmm. all the efforts. The number of colleagues in the civil society sector that did a lot of work, uh, some of them uh, formally, some of them behind the scenes. Eh? So Jennifer will tell you, yes, there was a steering committee. Uh, so there are still some civil society, some of our colleagues in the civil society who have been part of the government-led steering committee. But we had a strategy of those who are not in the steering committee. So most of the time, before people go to the steering committee, uh, Jennifer was part of the steering committee. Some of us were okay. doing what needs to be done mm -hmm. before they go to the steering committee. And then if you allow me, uh, I hope uh, this is, this is, Bring need it to, out, brother. we need to say this. Eh? Yes. <laughs> At some point, we had plan A group. This. <laughs> then in the plan A, we realized several things were not working. Uh -huh. A few of us retreated to plan B. Then in the plan B group, we realized many things are not working. Then we went to a plan C. Now, okay. now unknown to, unknown to the formal spaces. Yes. Uh, so we were in plan A. Then we realized this plan A group, mm. and even WhatsApp groups were created. So we could reach, retreat. Then we went to plan B group. Okay. Then we went to a plan C group. So there are those things we could discuss in a plan C group. Then now take it to plan B after having agreed in. <laughs> Now, the members who are part of Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, they know themselves. Uh, so sometimes you could see other people going to formal government meetings and, and, and they're representing certain things that have been canvassed and, and agreed on. Okay. So, so, so it worked. It worked well because uh, that's what contributed to some of these things you are saying here. And the number of agencies mm -hmm. and individuals. So we had people in their capacity as individual citizens who are passionate around the rights of children. Then you have people who are representing... Uh, representing organizations. When the right time comes, uh, when all is names. done, we'll be able to publish <laughs> the names, the journey, okay, okay. and of course, all right. yeah. of course, the names. All right, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, let's go for a short break. When we come back, we shall be delving deeper into the content uh, that is contained in this bill and some background about uh, the bill. We are welcome you to the fourth ECD conference that is going to be held at uh, Joost. Joost is Jaramogi Oginga Odinga's uh, University of Science and Technology from October the 25th. From October the 25th, it's going to be a blended conference. So a number of us will be at the venue, a number of us will be watching virtually from our houses, our offices, and across the county, across the country, across the world. This conference is going to bring us closer to why we need ECD early childhood development in our country and why our children are so important to us and why we need to nurture them to be important to us. Now, the conference is going to be holistic. Holistic in the form that it's going to feature on the child, it's going to feature on the caregiver, it's going to feature on the community as a whole, because at the end of the day, it's the full potential of the child that we are all seeking. That's the vision that we are all looking at. How to bring out this child to nurture the child's full potential for the sake of the community, for the sake of the, the, the place where the child lives. Now that's the reason why this conference is coming. There is a lot of things that will be there. There are many objectives that we are hoping to achieve. And uh, that's why we would like you to join us so that you can be able to take part in our discussions to take part in the forum. That is why uh, we are looking forward to having you as one of us. Welcome back and uh, thank you very much for keeping tuned. Uh, this is a conversation that we are having today. Uh, we are discussing about uh, the Children's Bill 2021. We want to hear a little bit, uh, Mr. Bonio, about some background about this bill. Why is this bill very important? 
okay. to you mm-hmm. and to a child and to a parent mm-hmm. that is watching us right now. Thanks, thanks, thank you very much, uh, Collins. Eh? This this bill is very important, and we hope that uh, when it is finally passed into law, it will sort out a number of things. Eh? Uh, like we said, the Children Act 201 was there before we got the Constitution. Now, the Constitution uh, 2010 uh, brought in it a robust uh, Bill of Rights. Now, for you to be able to implement, uh, and I think it's section, uh, 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 I think Article 21 talks about the implementation of, of, of these rights. Eh? For you to implement the provisions of the Constitution, you need uh, several legal and regulatory frameworks. Now, specifically the rights of the children, when you look at Article 53, the way they are well outlined there. So we needed to ensure that the implementation of that article then is done properly, and that called for either amending the Children Act 201, and then all the discussions were get a new bill. Now, this law now provides for a very clear framework on how Article 53 of the Constitution is to be implemented. Meaning, all those rights of the child, the bill provides for how they are supposed to be implemented. It clarifies the responsibilities of the duty bearer. And of course, duty bearer here is the state and its agencies. It also clarifies the responsibility of the parent. I, I think for me, that's the key thing that I want to bring out. You know, when you have a child, you become the parent. And you have a primary responsibility to begin to take care of your child. If you have male and female, husband and wife, or mother and father, your responsibility to take care of your own children is well clarified in this bill. And it's important that people begin to appreciate that when a child is born, that responsibility begins with the people, the mother and the father. That for me is a key thing that parents need to begin to appreciate. So this bill, the primary responsibility of taking care of the children is well clarified here. We may need to remind all our parents and guardians, wherever they are, to read this bill and begin to understand what is their responsibility. Issues around basic nutrition. You know, for you to achieve basic nutrition, the bill talks about the, the responsibility of the child or of the parent to ensure basic nutrition for children. What does that mean? You have to provide food. So the, so the, so, so the parents need to realize that the, the provision of food in your household for your children is your own responsibility. But for you to do that, you need to be ga- involved in some gainful income opportunity or employment for you to get some income to provide for your food. So it will push now the state to ensure that adult persons have gainful income generating opportunities for them to be able to provide for their children. Now, should the parents be unable to provide for their children, then the state must then provide for a good social protection framework for the parents to provide for their children. So that for me is a key thing in this bill. It also sorts out the coordination of, of children's services uh, in this country. You know clearly, uh, every year, people are talking about, we have the Department of Children's Services, we have the National Council of Children's Services, but then, unless you engage with them, you may not understand clearly what the difference is in terms of the responsibility. Now, this bill sorts out that administrative arrangement. So it now establishes properly the National Council of Children's Services with specific functions. It establishes the Office of the Director of Children's Services with specific functions. At the county level, we are moving away from the County Area Adversary Council to the County Adversary Committee that then has specific functions and then it will also take us up to some county level. It also clarifies clearly the responsibilities of the Cabinet Secretary responsible for Children Matters. What the Cabinet Secretary responsible for Children Matters should do in as far as children's rights uh, are concerned, right? It also safeguards all the rights of children. It clarifies who's a child in need of care and protection and what needs to be done for children in need of care and protection. 
it sorts out uh, the children justice system uh, framework. So, so for me, I think it's, 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 it's very elaborate, it's a good one. However, it may require a lot of time for people to really understand specific sections of, of the bill and what it means for children. I would be happy if, I don't know whether that can happen, we get to a level where we have materials, whether this bill can be synthesized or simplified in a child-friendly version. So that, as opposed from me explaining why this bill is important, we'll be happy to see children themselves appreciating that this bill is important for them. That means we take the bill, synthesize it into child-friendly formats, educate the children, for them to understand why the bill is important so that when it comes low, they readily accept it. All right, mm. all right, thank you. Uh, now, Jennifer, uh, what stands out for you uh, from this bill? So, a couple of stuff, but I just want to, to go back to what um, Bonio has said about parental responsibility. So this bill is very big on parental responsibility in terms of who is a parent, you know, the, the who is a parent and, and what who can who gets parental responsibility and it's not limited to biological par mm, uh, people mm. okay and i want to repeat that it's not limited to someone who has given birth to that child okay it goes into issues to do alternative care if you have abducted child it's very big on adoption it's actually encouraging um people to to adopt children okay it's on foster care okay for the first time in kenya if you foster a child the provision in this bill, you're going to be given money by government to take care of that child. Okay? So if you foster a child, this bill has provided that you'll be given money to take care of that child, which is good. Okay? And as you, I, I don't know if those ones who are watching us are aware, Kenya is moving from residential or institutional based care to family based care. Okay? We are moving children from institution, from staying in a children institution. Uh, orph orphanages, okay, to staying at home, okay. So this is a motivation for someone who say, I would want to take a take up a child, but I don't have money to take up. So the bill provides for that, and it's very very strong on that, on providing uh, f family based care to a child, okay. And that what what when you're saying about social protection, okay. So and we are learning from some amazing uh, uh, some amaz amazing uh, projects, like in for example in Busia where the county government actually gives 2,000 shillings per child per month and also provides school, school, school fees or provides for schooling for that child for free so that that parent who is taking of that child is able to take care of that child uh, wholly. Mm -hmm. okay? So it's, it's very, and I would encourage, if you're a parent, uh, in fact, let me just read, um, let me just read some of the provision. Uh, it defines parental responsibility. Clause 29 defines parental responsibility as all duties, rights, powers, responsibility, and authority which by law the parent of a child has a relation to the child and the child's property in a manner consistent to the evolving capacity of the child. Okay? Evolving capacity. How you take care of your adolescent and how you take care of your, your, your toddler. Okay? And Parental responsibility include the duty to maintain the child, in particular to provide the child with basic, what Bonio said, basic nutrition and shelter, water and sanitation, facilities, clothing, medical care, including immunization, basic education, general guidance, social conduct, and moral values. Okay? So we, these things that we say we can be able to delegate like mm -hmm. values, mm -hmm. you will not be able to do that. So this bill is very clear. You have the responsibility of providing moral and values to your child. So here comes an opportunity for parents to start asking questions. I want to provide medical care for my child. Is there universal health? Mm -hmm. Okay? So you, you, have the, you, ha you can be able to ask those questions. Yes, you have given me the responsibility, but I don't have access. As government so you can be able to hold government acts accountable for you not being able to provide a right to parental care to your child okay so yeah. uh, I'm so, so, sorry uh, I need to do this so and the other thing that is very crucial and uh, because this is a political thing because I've seen it is there's another bill that is saying about this about equal parental responsibility 
Okay, there's a whole conversation in parliament right now on what that means. Equal parental responsibility. If, for instance, me and you get a baby, okay, we have equal parental responsibility. Okay, I will not because you are the rich person, you don't you don't have the full responsibility. I also have a responsibility. Okay, and and fortunately, this has to be determined by by court on what that equal looks like. Okay, I may be told ensure that the child takes a bath every day. Okay, uh, has a shelter, you pay school fees, but it has to be equal responsibility. responsibility. Mm -hmm. So th this one, it not no no one parent is superior to the other, and it also goes to even is issues of visitation. Okay, you have a right as because they and I'm going to speak because of uh, women have been accused of this of not. Uh, allowing men to see their children. So as a man, you also have a, re a, a right to be able to see your child whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is, it's, a very, it's a very progressive and, and I, I was among the people who drafted and I can say we really did take care of some of these challenges. Mm -hmm. So where a, a woman disappears with a child and the child will, will surface 25 years later. So we have said that is illegal. So as a man, you can go to court and say you want the right yes, yes. to see your child yes oh wow wow yeah. that's amazing mm -hmm. thank you for thank you for breaking that that uh, down how about you uh mr bonya what what stands out for you I okay okay uh, thank you for giving me another opportunity to advance <laughs> what stands out eh? but but i think we we need to appreciate that uh, why do you want to legislate parental responsibility yeah you know, we need to also look at why must the parental responsibility be provided for in law? It's because of where we are coming from, the, the, the challenges that people are seeing in the society. So does it mean maybe parents have uh, neglected uh, children? I, I, I wouldn't say that parents have neglected their children. I, I think we need to understand who is a parent and how people find themselves into being parents. It's critical. We have situations where children, uh, persons below the age of 18, for example, a child has been abused, sexual violence, and here we have a child who is pregnant at 16. Right? By the time this child gets to 19 years, now the person is an adult. So you are 19 years and you have a child. You're already a parent. And no one has taken you through a process of understanding what's your responsibility. But unfortunately, you have found yourself being a parent. Then here you go. The person then who offers to support you is your mother or your father who are also struggling with how to take care of you and the grandchild and others. So, so parenting is a big issue. So we may have, like James have says, we may have the responsibilities properly provided for, but unless we deal with the parental education, then we still not achieve this. So it's granted it is good we have parental responsibilities clarified, but I don't think advancing parental responsibility has to wait for the law to be passed. We have an opportunity to begin teasing out what are some of these things that are responsible for parents, and how can we educate ourselves and parental education is not just responsibility of the state we have to get community structures to educate themselves we have to get the religious leaders to educate themselves because the alternative care that uh, jennifer mentioned the bill is trying to sort out now that we are likely to have children in need of care and protection who might then be categorized as children who require alternative care how do we move forward with that? But we need to ensure that we reduce or even eliminate situations where children find themselves in need of care and protection. Right? So if we invest in good parental programs, it means I and Jennifer, if we are one family, then we are likely to take care of our children properly. In the event we are not able to, then our immediate family members or community should be able to help support taking care of the children. And in the long run, you are likely to reduce the number of children in need of care and protection. Or in children who are supposed to then to be categorized children require alternative care, care services. Yeah. 
so, so that for me is a key thing that we need to now look at. Yes, we have the provisions in law, but what is the reality that must also be must also be done. And just lastly, just to also mention that the, the primary responsibility of providing certain things, uh, which is the role of the state, is already going on anyway. The right to education, for example, the cabinet sector responsible for education has a responsibility to do that. Right? So we also need to now look at this bill makes references to other legal frameworks already in place and just emphasizes that those other legal frameworks should be implemented as it were. Yeah, oh, okay, all right, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think that there are also some other things uh, that maybe uh, people might not be understanding that I want you guys to, to, to clarify. Mm. This issue of uh, uh, age of consent, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there are people who believe that, you know, when this bill uh, passes, mm. as it is, mm. maybe the, the, the age of consent might go down to 16. I want, I want to hear if that is in the bill. Mm. And also tell us your position as uh, Mr. Bonio and maybe a uh, civil society. Okay. Anyone below the age of 18 is a child. So the age of consent is 18. Mm. There's no other age. You, you see, sometimes it's good to respect what is already provided for, mm. as opposed to asking, what do you think? What is provided for, which I support, is 18 years, and there's no other age. And is, is there a likelihood of that uh, maybe provision being uh, manipulated? No. <laughs> Manip it is not. <laughs> manipulated by, by who? who? No, because, because you know, this, this bill is going through a process. We are in the first reading. Let, let me give you, let me just cut you short. Mm -hmm. The investments that colleagues have made into ensuring that we have a good bill must be defended. Mm. And uh, the drafter, the lead drafter for this bill uh, was Dr. Laibuta, who is right now, who was appointed uh, one of the, 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 the judge of the Court of Appeal. Yes. And I remember very well, he was so patient listening to everyone and also explaining to you why whatever you are proposing is being taken and why whatever you are proposing cannot be taken. Right? Now, tell me, if people have invested in technical support and all manner of investments into this, why would you want to imagine that certain things that have been provided for gains made would be lost? We will be finding our responsibility that we have a lot of gains made here. Then we sit and say, you know, this can go. It will not go. Yes, uh, I can assure you, as long as the passion yes. with Jennifer and team, some of these things will be defended the way they are. This is so, what I'm imagining. <laughs> yes, Jennifer. No, let me tell you. I, I'm actually reading the bill. Okay. It says, a child means an individual who has not attained the age of 18. And the best thing about this bill, maybe some people who, who may not know, it increases the age of um, criminal responsibility, criminal responsibility to, 12. to 12 from, from nine eight. years old. Mm. So we are trying because we were the lowest at nine yes. years old. You know, uh, my 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 son who is almost nine can be uh, liable for crime. You know, we are removing that to okay? twelve. To twelve, okay, because we want to 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 get towards eighteen, which is the international recognized. And then number two, Kenya is a signatory of the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child and the African Charter on the Rights of the and the Welfare of the Child. There is no way we can reduce the age of consent to 16. It's because when you, when you say that, it's like you're saying, now girls go get married. And according to the, the Marriage Act, only two consenting Perhaps. adults <laughs> can get married. Okay. And Collins, let, let me just reassure you. Yes. We may not have time. Given an opportunity, a lot of people in the civil society, especially child-focused actors or organizations, will basically explain properly why every provision mm. in this bill should go as it is. Okay. And yes, Parliament has opened space for public participation, for people to give their views. What that opportunity means, either you are giving your views in support of the bill as it is, or you are giving your views 
by proposing additional areas that you want to be looked into. Whereas everyone has an opportunity to do that, when confronted with situations where certain proposals might not be in the best interest of the child, what do you do? You oppose them. Right? So what we now need to do is to take this discussion to parents for them to understand why they should read this bill and participate in providing their views around the bill by sending those views to parliament. We also need to get to a level where children are educated on the bill for them to present their views in their own interest for their views to be taken care of. Now, if that is done, if you get the children views taken into account and you get parental views taken into account, the country will be happy and move forward. I really don't see any controversy as long as children views and parental views are taken into account. But if you bring our own interests which are not driven by the parental angle and the child angle, that will gonna be a problem. All right, all right. Thank you. Now, uh, I'm, 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 this, this, this is the reason as to why I'm asking this. Uh, one, if for example now a child or children in their views have said uh, we want the age of consent to be 16. Yes. And maybe a good number of parents have also written and said uh, we want the age of consent to be 16 because of this and this and this reason. And Parliament, uh, which represents the interests of parents and children at the constituency level, says because these are the views of parents and these are the views of our constituents, Let's pass this bill and change this this part, the consent part. That, 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 that is utopian. You see, yes. that is actually utopian. I will tell you for sure. <laughs> you know, what you are saying yes. is an imagination. Let me yes, make it's it. Good let, let, yeah, it's good to imagine. Yes. Let me make it easier for you. Mm. Whether there is this bill or not, we have a responsibility to provide guidance mm. to our children, values, morals mm. we have that responsibility we have an education system in this country children are being taught in school and they're being taught the right thing we have religious institutions that are teaching children in the religious uh, centers they are teaching children the right thing so if schools are teaching children the right thing religious institutions are teaching children the right thing well, why why we want to imagine that children will say the wrong thing? Okay. And then uh, yes. the best thing about this bill, it clarifies <laughs> best interest of the child. Yes. Okay. So what? And it's very clear. The best interest of children shall be of the paramount, particularly in the paramount importance. Okay. So if in reducing the age of consent to sixteen, is it in the best interest of the child? A it's sixteen not. year old is in form two. What does that mean? We are getting from two year or from two girls pregnant. They're coming from their husbands of homes to, to right. get married to oh, go okay, okay, to okay. school. Okay, Jennifer. All right, thank you very much. That was very heated. Uh, let's go for a short break. When we come back, we're going to look at the final part of it on the child participation and uh, public participation that uh, is currently going on, and uh, there is a process that uh, was announced uh, by Parliament that we are supposed to submit the memorandas and all that to make sure that we participate in this way. I want to welcome you on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of this university and even on behalf of our Senate. I'm welcoming you to attend the conference on the ECD network that will be held and hosted by this university on behalf of CIA County uh, on 25th October 2021. Uh, this will be the fourth ECD network conference after the first and second one having been held in Kenyatta University and the third one having been held in Mombasa. We are proud to be associated with the fourth hosting of this particular conference. All right, thank you very much for keeping tuned in and uh, welcome back to Child Rights Now. We are discussing the Children's Bill 2021 and with me here is uh, Mr. Elijah Bonio uh, from the Joining Forces Alliance and uh, Ms. Jennifer Kaberi, uh, the Director and CEO of Total News. So, uh, 
we've discussed quite a number of things and uh, it was a bit heated when I mentioned um, the age of consent. So I want to, to know from you guys, now that we have uh, two weeks, about two weeks for uh, partic public participation, I want to hear from you, Jennifer, first of all. When you hear pu public participation, most of the time, uh, you know, uh, people's minds go directly to adults. Since this uh, process started, have children participated and what are we anticipating uh, in the coming days? So yes, children participated in the development of the bill. Okay, so children views were, 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 concerns, were, were, were collected from all over the country. But, you know, these children now are adults. That was in 2016. That's the process. Now, if a uh, 16 year old right, was 16 in 2016, now they are 21, 22, right? Yeah, you know, one, one of them actually is part of our team, who was part of the children. So, but we need children, the current generation of children to be able to participate and look through the bill. They might see, one thing I tell guys, one thing I love about children, they give you a perspective that is very different. Mm. And you know, so, it's, so it will be important for them to look at the current bill as it is. Because when we were developing in 2019, to, no, sorry, 20, 26, 2015, 2016, 2017, we didn't have COVID-19 realities. Mm -hmm. Okay, and COVID nineteen has brought a whole uh, bucket of stuff on its own. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we didn't have so many ch as many children online as we have right mm -hmm. now. Okay, we did not have uh, the uh, the current realities that I'm saying issues to do with climate change. Okay, we did not have them. Okay, uh, well, maybe one there, but they're not as pronounced as they are right now. So it, for me, it will be very important for us to be able to engage children and the current generation of children to be able to look at this bill with their eyes. Okay, they will see stuff that we have not seen. Okay, mm. from their eyes, and they are going to improve on it. Okay, so for me, that is very important. And if you're a parent um, who is watching us, we have the bill. Uh, if you go across Mutatoni's platforms, we have posted the bill uh it is there available and you're going to be also a child friendly version of it we have tried to simplify it into two three pages so that you can be able to 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 help your child understand what it is and let them give you your bill and it's very you don't have to send you can send the views to total news but you can send the views directly to parliament so we don't we can't be in you can send it if you feel you guys are going to edit my my children's views send it to parliament directly so we're encouraging you can do it at home okay we are going to have a process starting next week on monday actually on saturday we are going to start from saturday uh we're going to have a process where we are engaging children okay and we're going to do it at at school level uh, we are yeah. engaging uh, we are working with bacon teachers uh who which is a group of uh uh, ch uh, human rights, child rights defender ch teachers from across Kenya and you're going to engage children at school level, okay, and to be able for those children to be able to give us views, okay mm -hmm. and we encourage you as, especially parents, as you see, in fact I, I, at this moment I'm almost calling it parents, parental responsibility bill, because it has a huge component, I think almost 60% is on parenting Okay, so please read it. Uh, have a group of your friends. If you have a chama, maybe a, a, a faith based thingy, have a seat, go through the bill, write your comments, send it to parliament. Okay, mm -hmm. because it's your responsibility. Because we don't have a repeat of CBC where parents were not involved. So for us, we are very deliberate in ensuring that parents understand the content of the bill. And yeah. we are hoping uh, next week we can be able to engage some more and do a few more shows and just delve into the bill a little bit more and have more experts just engaging and talking about the bill. Right. Uh, thank you. Well, thank yeah. you. So, yeah. so, Mr. Bonio, um, uh, maybe break down a little bit, you know, what is expected of, uh, in this process, uh, the uh, uh, public participation and now the child participation, which I know in public participation, your know, children are uh, are under public mm. public public participants. But it would have been good to to include children, uh, in something children participation or public participation. Yeah, that is in my view. Uh, tell okay. us about it. You, you know, uh, this bill provides for that right to participation. It actually talks of the children have, have a right to even present views, they have a right to petition, 
uh, stuff like that. Eh? So this is going to advance that. But even without this, we already have a requirement that people are supposed to participate. And I normally say our constitution does not say adults, adult participation. Yes. It's public and people. Now public as adults and children. People, adults and children. So how can children then participate? In my view, we may need to start from the lessons learned again around the constitutional making process. Before you participate, you should be aware why are you participating. So we have an opportunity to sensitize or create awareness among children why it is important to participate in the public participation space. And then meaningful participation. Now to do that, we have to demonstrate to them why this bill is an opportunity for their participation. A a and we really need to isolate what are these things that is working well for children that this bill is safeguarding. And what are the emerging realities that this bill is also addressing? So like Jennifer says, I, I think, it, it, I don't know, I don't know the, the time frame could be minimal, but it's important, first of all, create more time to educate the children around the content of the bill and let them interact with the content. That is the only time they'll be able to say, having listened to what the content is, this is my proposal as a child, as an individual child, or this is our proposal as a group of children in a child rights club or in a school. So I, I think Parliament might have not considered that. In any case, the email that Jennifer talks about would have loved a situation where Parliament provides two emails. One email for children. So, so that then we analyze among the proposals that have gone to to Parliament, if you if if they gave an exclusive email address for all children views, yes. then one for parents and other groups, then you begin to see how much information have you got from children. Number two, written view is important because of COVID uh, restrictions. I don't see uh, National Assembly organizing for forums, so we have twenty three thousand primary schools alone. I would be happy to see 23,000 memoranda per school. Meaning, every school should organize children and then children send. What that means, we are going to have 23,000 emails sent to this email address. Does parliament have the capacity? So, so let's take children more seriously than we are doing. Because if, if National Assembly is serious around participation, and this bill is for children. And that it is interested, the, the, the National Assembly is interested in hearing from children. We have a very good framework called the school. The Ministry of Education sends one circular in the morning. In the evening, it is in all schools. So what stops the National Assembly from going to the Ministry of Education and saying, please send this bill to all schools? And then the Ministry of Education will collaborate with the Department of Children's Services and Teacher Service Commission and of course other actors like Beacon Teachers and then they'll say we are allocating one day, one Friday for all schools. See today we have uh, government pronouncing itself that this day is a holy day, this day is this. Why can't we say the next two weeks Ministry of Education, if we really mean well for children, the Director of Children Services, National Council of Children Services, those three entities, Education, NCCS, and DCS, they should agree that one day is allocated from eight to five for teachers to sensitize the children on the bill in their school. Then children go home over the weekend, they love conversation with their parents and their community. When they come back on Monday, then they write what they want, and then the teachers will just help them to type, and then it's sent to the email. Then we get 23,000 memorandum from every primary school. 
Then we go to secondary school. The numbers. That is what participation should be moving towards. Okay. We're looking upon Parliament to tell us how many memorandum they shall have re achieved from, received from children. But some of these things may not happen if ourselves in the civil society do not come in. So I like Jennifer's proposal. Why can't we in the civil society stop everything else for the next two weeks and facilitate child participation? What will go wrong if the civil society stopped the activities they are planned for the next two weeks and focused on child participation? Nothing. So I'm pleading with colleagues in the civil society, instead of convening conferences uh, forever it is, you can convene conferences in November. Take the next two weeks. If you really mean well for children, if you're a child-focused organization, just create time and say, this is one of participation. We only have two weeks. Mobilize parents and children. Let them write their views by themselves. We can only, like Jennifer says, coordinate and put it together. But the initial view should come to the, from the children and parents. And if you want to put views as an institution, as an organization, those views, make sure it is in the interest of? The child. Don't bring your own mm. expertise, mm. theories from wherever you want to get them. Make sure whatever you are writing down is in the best interest of the child. And remember, even as you write as a civil society organization that you are writing a memorandum, you are also a parent or a caregiver anyway. That for me is what I would emphasize in terms of mm. participation. Now, well, the moment the parliament receives all these reports, we want them published. We want to see, we want parliament to tell us, we receive this number of memoranda and categorize them by, from civil society organizations, from private sector, from religious organization, from children, from parents, from schools. We could be moving to what we call the threshold for public participation. Every member of parliament who means well for children should go back to their constituency the next two weeks. Call a children forum. Nothing stops them. Every member of parliament just go back to your constituency. If you're a women county representative, go back to the county, just call a children forum because you have the bill anyway. Say, as you are a member of parliament, this bill is in parliament, right? I want to hear your views so that I take them to Parliament on your behalf. So an MP who fails to convene children forums in the interest of children to facilitate the views to Parliament is equally failing. But we'll hear them saying children bill is important. Demonstrate that children bill is important by going back to the constituency, facilitate child participation forums. Wow. Thank that's, you. That's, that's very, very important. But, but um, you know, you know, like I think last week, there was a debate that uh, a number, a good number of members of parliament missed a debate on fuel. And now I, I'm asking myself, if these people missed a debate on fuel, how likely are they to participate on the children's bill? Uh, right, uh, that is another question for another day. So, so Jenny, uh, or what, what is preventing us from realizing uh, child participation? Uh, for me, is. Apart from the understanding of the concept of child participation, mm -hmm. okay, child participation does not mean that um, a, the child has taken over the role of being an adult. It is just mm -hmm. simply uh, listening to the child, be sen being sensitive to the needs of that child and responding to that child. Okay? That child is not taking over your role as a parent or as an adult. So it is just that concept of a of, uh, of people understand child participation. And then the other one is, as Bonio said, is resources, okay? A politician right now is elections, okay? A politician would spend millions of money going and doing campaigns, okay? But now when we tell them, go, we are not use, telling you to use all that money for campaign. Just use a fraction of that money. Sit down children from your constituency and ask them what they want. Okay, and then take those views to parliament. But because children are not voters, you know, if this was the it was an adult bill, they would run. 
but because it's not attached adult it's not an adult as children's being they will not do that okay because children don't vote so that people kind of say ah I, you understand <laughs> so they are they, they are not they are not votes okay so the other one is um um the children themselves they don't know they have a right to, to participate mm -hmm. so they don't know they don't know how to demand and you ca I, I can tell you uh we i work with children as soon as a child knows higher i am able to participate they open up and they start asking questions because they they realize okay so i have this right it's something because they don't know okay so and it is important for us to be able to let children know that they have a right to participate and also give them a platform an opportunity to be that's what we do like and Toton is giving them a platform an opportunity mm. to come and talk one of the children told us we asked them um uh, why 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 don't you like schools? But ah, school, they don't allow me. You know, when I come here to Mtoto News, they allow me to talk and I'm able to yeah. express myself. Okay? Are we able to express, are they able to express themselves? Okay? Yeah. So for us, I, I, and the best thing about the bill, it provides for that. It provides yeah, yeah. for, for mm. all that, for child participation. Yeah. So it is not going to be a by the way. The, the, the state will be required to ensure child mm -hmm. participation. Oh, right. Yes. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you very much. You know, uh, I was engaging a parent, a child, who, uh, you know, this child has never talked to like a parent that much. The day we engaged them at Mutoto um, News in a child children's forum, and they went back home, and the mother told me, you know, the kind of discussions they engaged that day. Mm -hmm. They have never, and this guy, this, this child is around five to seven years. Mm. The kind of discussion they had that day, she has mm -hmm. never had that, and she even realized the importance of yes. uh, child participation. And even uh, when the from the session, they were discussing about uh, uh, the choice to choose maybe uh, to decide on the menu. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now when evening came, uh, the child is asking, Mom, what are we eating? Yes. Because we were told, we are supposed to, to discuss this. Yeah. And, so, and, and just well on it, yes. uh, Jennifer mentioned a very important point, listening. You know, we can talk and talk and talk, but the key thing, let them talk, bring their views and listen. So how much time do you want to create listening against... So, so listening is important. Then we have children with special needs. Children who are blind. One of the gaps we have, no one has so far put this in braille. Yeah. And you're talking about participation. Mm. Right? So we need to ensure that children who are blind have access to material they can read and inform their participation. Children who are deaf... So we need to remember that we also have children who are blind, who are deaf, and other children with special needs, who equally have a right to participate. To, to, to participation. Yeah. That, that for me is really, really critical, and we must, we, we must say that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we, because I'm, I'm hoping this is a call. For me, I, I'm, I'm challenging Parliament uh, right now. They always have these things. They can, they can actually convince Minister uh, of Education, Minister of Interior, to declare one of the days between now and forth as as a day for child participation okay actually i think first of november is international day of parents or something so they can declare that day where children can be able to come and say today we just want to discuss about the children's bill because it's very unfortunate that we had a whole day where we are discussing bbi but we don't have time to discuss children <laughs> yes thank yes. you so much colleagues uh, to three groups of, of, of actors, religious leaders. The next two weeks, you have a great opportunity to facilitate discussion in your religious spaces on this bill and document the views of your constituency in the religious space, children and adults, on this. The second uh, group is the schools. We have the Kenya Primary Schools Health Association. We have the Kenya Secondary Schools Health Association. We have the Parents Association. You have a responsibility to ensure child participation and that the views of children are heard on this bill the next uh, two weeks. The last group of people is the parents. Parents have a responsibility. Any parent who has a smartphone can actually access internet easily. 
the email address is already given and perhaps you may want to read it to them later on you only need to in your own comfort in the house send an email and say in the best interest of our children this is what i'm recommending to parliament to do or you can have your own family meeting the parent or parents and their children have a discussion and some of us are going to do this and document your family views and in your comfort of your house send an email because the other institutions like the private sector actors the civil society actors are more or less facilitators of processes but the views must just come from the children themselves because they're the primary beneficiary of the bill and, and, and the parents all right hey, thank you thank you very much uh, for the amazing discussion it has been wonderful uh being part of uh, this I really appreciate you, uh, Mr. Elijah Bonyo, uh, for thank you. coming. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jennifer Kaberi, for coming and being part of this discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what I would say is uh, give your child a chance. Um, don't imagine they are quiet. Give them an opportunity to speak. You will be shocked to see what your child will tell you or the proposals that they will give you in relation to their life. My name is Colin Sorono. This is Child Rights Now. Let's meet again next week. Bye-bye.